Hi, I'm Karina Forsen, Chief Hazard Geologist for the Washington Geological Survey. And I'm Daniel Unger, Geologist and Tsunami Scientist for the Washington Geological Survey. We're here today to release a new series of tsunami evacuation products, also called walk maps. They teach you how long it will take to get out of a tsunami inundation zone and the preferred routes that you should take. People that live, work, and play near the coast in Washington state are at risk for tsunamis. Our main causes of tsunamis in Washington are from earthquakes and landslides. If you feel an earthquake, that's your warning and you should evacuate and get to high ground immediately. We encourage you to take a look at our evacuation maps before you feel an earthquake so that you know the best route to high ground and how long it will take you to get there. If you hear a tsunami siren or an official warning, those are also notices that it might be a distant source earthquake that is causing a tsunami um, to approach the Washington coast. So you should listen to local emergency officials and also get to high ground immediately. You should check out our website at dnr.wa.gov slash tsunami or the Washington Geologic Information Portal to learn about these maps and products. These maps were created in GIS using a toolkit derived by the USGS. With this toolkit, we could take the inundation layer from our tsunami model and using various data sources, model how long it takes for one to walk to a high ground location from wherever they are within the inundation zone. And so that gives you an estimate of how long it would take you to evacuate before the wave arrives. This is modeled at a slow walk pace, meaning uh, it's a pace that most average adults can easily uh, maintain. And if you like to think of something that's analogous to it, it is the timing of crosswalks. If you could cross through a crosswalk before the hand comes up and tells you you've exceeded your time, then you are walking faster than this pace. Um, so it's a good estimate for how long it takes you to get out of the inundation zone. The different colors on the map here symbolize the amount of time it will take you based on your location to get to high ground. In all of these evacuation maps, the gray area that's shaded differently than the colored area is high ground, or what we're calling the safe area from a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. The routes in red are designated as the main evacuation routes, but any of the secondary streets will lead you to those main routes and will get you to safety. If assembly areas are marked on the maps, um, emergency managers recommend that you ga gather at the assembly areas for reunification with your loved ones and friends and family. Um, if there are no assembly areas, get to high ground and wait for their instruction from the local emergency management. So we're releasing these walk maps for the communities of Aberdeen, Oquim, Cosmopolis, Port Angeles, Bellingham, and the Anacortes area. And with these maps, it uses the latest and greatest of tsunami science in terms of inundation extent from our uh, inundation modeling. It uses the latest topography from LIDAR, flown by the WGS and other uh, related agencies. And it uses land cover uh, from the USGS's 2011 land cover data set. What does all that mean? It means that the information that goes into this helps derive how long it takes to walk given what you're walking through. So right now we're walking through a nice level parking lot. And as you can see from this pace that we're walking, this is approximately close to the slow walk pace. It's very easy to do. If we were walking up a steep hill or if we were walking through some heavy brush, as Karina is now demonstrating, <laughs> it may take a lot longer for you to walk through that sort of material and up that sort of incline. And so that would moderate your walking pace. This is all taken into account in the modeling process. One thing to keep in mind is if you have young children or if you are or know or are trying to help someone who has mobility restrictions, this pace might not be the pace that you'll be able to move at. And so you must take into account your own personal walking pace when you're evacuating. We encourage you to, if you live in these communities or visit these communities, attempt to evacuate through a practice run, a drill at your pace and time yourself. See how long it takes. That way you'll know for you how long it will take you to get to, to high and dry ground. One more thing to add is that the time estimates that we show on these evacuation maps are from the time the earthquake starts shaking. And so if this is a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, shaking could last for five minutes. And so um, the amount of time it will take you to get to safety after you gather yourself and finish your drop cover and hold on could be um, longer depending on the amount of debris or liquefaction or different um, 
different things that have happened during the earthquake. And so you should always use situational awareness and try to avoid any obstacles that have fallen or become um, in the way when you evacuate. And also um, try and, you know, just get to high ground the safest way possible, trying to follow the major evacuation routes.